The patient is placed on his back, and the operator tilts his head back, opens his mouth, pinches his nose, breathes air into his mouth by blowing into it. Tilting the head back is essential to prevent the tongue from the respiratory passages. When mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration begins, after each breath, see whether the casualty's chest is expanding. If the chest is not expanding, the respiratory passages are blocked. So, turn the casualty's head on one side and clean out his mouth and throat with the index finger. Then continue mouth-to-mouth -mouth artificial respiration, breathing in air at the rate of 10 to 15 times a minute, that is, about every 5 seconds. To sum up, the casualty is lying on his back. Tilt his head back, open his mouth, pinch his nose, breathe in air every five seconds. Watch the expansion of his chest. It is often easier to give mouth-to-nose artificial respiration. The casualty's head is again tilted back. Keep his mouth closed and breathe air into his nostrils. As for mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration, air should be breathed in every five seconds, and the casualty's chest watched for expansion. Artificial respiration can be long and tire the operator. It can be carried out with a respirator at the same rate, chest expansion always being carefully watched. Cardiac arrest is always a danger. In this case, cardiac compression must then be started as an emergency and carried out along with mouth-to-mouth -mouth or mouth-to-nose artificial respiration. If the heart is no longer beating, the pupil is dilated, and the pulse of the carotid artery is no longer beating, a cardiac compression must be started as a matter of extreme urgency. The casualty having been laid on a hard surface, the operator places his left hand on the back of the right, fingers raised. He applies pressure on the lower part of the sternum. The pressure is exerted with the heel of the right hand, almost vertically, and with stretched arms, to depress the lower sternum a minimum of one and a half to two inches, three to five centimeters. External cardiac compression must always be accompanied by artificial respiration. Tilt the casualty's head back and open his mouth. Give two insufflations, then 15 compressions. This is the ratio of ventilations to compressions when there is only one operator, the rate of compression being approximately 80 per minute. To repeat, two insufflations, 15 compressions. two insufflations, 15 compressions at the rate of 80 per minute. The single rescuer must perform the compressions at this faster rate in order to allow for interruptions for insufflations, thus achieving the normal rate of 60 per minute. When there are two operators, one performs the insufflations while the other carries out heart compressions continuously without any interruption whatsoever. The normal rate of 60 per minute can therefore be observed. One insufflation to five compressions, 
This is the ratio of ventilation to compression with two operators. To give more freedom of movement, it is better that the operators should be on opposite sides of the casualty. When checking the pupil, and carotid pulse indicates that the heart has begun to beat again, artificial respiration alone should be continued until normal respiration returns.